Good morning, everybody. It is Thursday, September 12th, 2024. And as you can see, I'm coming to you today from the glorious confines of my Nissan Serena. Because you've guessed it, I'm at the laundromat again. The reason I'm here today is because uh, yesterday I inadvertently broke our washing machine. Um, what happened was basically I had a load in and I put a cushion, I took the cushion cover off and I put the cushion in and I should have put the cushion in to a laundry net and uh, I didn't do that and unfortunately when it started spinning it got stuck in the lid and ripped to shreds so there is nylon stuffing everywhere and it clogged up the machine. Now I was, un I was able to unblock it but unfortunately something has happened to the programming cycle or the computer or so when it spins it makes a very loud knocking so noise so i'm guessing that something's not cleared out um so i had to bring the laundry here today to dry off and there is bits of white nylon cushion filling everywhere in the uh, sunroom where the load from yesterday is still drying well we'll get that sorted out one way or the other anyway uh, today, I wanted to talk about Akia housing. Right now on YouTube, you'll see a lot of people are getting interested in buying Akia housing. And if you don't know what Akia housing is, here's a quick description. Basically, somebody builds a house 30, 40, 50 years ago, and they move out, or they die, uh, or they just abandon the house and everything in it, which is not uncommon here in Japan. And the house becomes available... Uh, the family will sell it or um, it goes into the hands of the government and then the government will uh, try to sell it through a reputable dealer. And you can buy them very cheap, anywhere from anywhere from like a couple of thousand dollars up to fifty, sixty thousand dollars or more, depending on the age and the condition of the house. Now, they, there's a lot of these channels don't tell you on YouTube what you need to do in order to have an Akia house and what you should be made aware of when you buy one. Specifically, they don't tell you about the land tax, the property tax, the sales tax, the gift tax. Yes, there's a gift tax. When you buy an Akia, you're basically given a gift tax. And I believe that goes to whoever owns the house at the time. Uh, what else? And property tax is recurring, by the way. So the other day, and also taking care of the land. Now, this is a big thing because if you buy a, a house, you think, wow, I got this great deal on this house for $20,000 and I got like at least an acre or so of land. Let's just talk about that very briefly because, um, and this won't apply if you have a very small garden, where which is easy to take care of with low maintenance. But if you own a house with a lot of property, like the Hirao house that our family has, then... It is constant work. It is constant, and it's almost daily, if not every other day, that you're cutting grass, you're cutting bushes, you're having to deal with wild animals like uh, boar, uh, or inoshishi we call them here. So wild boar, wild monkeys, and even the occasional bear, although bears do tend to stay away from man-made areas. Uh, and you've just got to constantly keep that going you've got to constantly keep that upkeep on that land and it's not easy so the other day i was in hirao and i made this short video so i'll let you watch that and then we'll get right back to it they often sit up there and you can see they've done a real good number down here where they've been rooting around for vegetables and stuff but they really do make a real mess of the area and they come from those bushes right up there they hide in that tree line and live in the woods at night and they come out foraging around this entire area see they've been down here and really nowhere is off limits to them is that a mushroom that is, that's a mushroom. I'm not sure what type it is though. Probably a poisonous one. I'm not gonna risk touching that. Oh, there's another one over there too. 
and they've dug up all this area here. Real problem. And uh, sometimes you see them during the day, but they do tend to stay away from humans. Beautifully glorious day. It's still really hot. It's at least 36 Celsius today. Looks like summer has no intention to leave. I really wish summer would pack up and go and give autumn a shot now. I'm going to have a walk down and see what needs doing. I didn't bring my overalls today, but we've got a couple of mushrooms growing here. And uh, all the grass is getting overgrown again, so it needs to be cut really badly. And I wish I'd brought my overalls now, because all this needs to be trimmed down down here. It's uh, People talk about having an Akia house or an old house here in Japan, something similar to this, where you can buy these for a very cheap, anywhere between roughly, say, $5,000 to thirty, forty, fifty thousand dollars $50,000, depending on the area and the um, quality of the property. But what they don't realize is, especially foreigners, when they come to Japan, they don't realize just how much it work it takes to look after the grounds. So you've got all these bushes here that Grandpa used to have as part of his business, um, and they still need to be maintained and cut, otherwise they just overgrow. <laughs> they get covered in ivy. I got this tree right here. I hope you can see where I'm pointing. Is a um, sort of a plum tree, and every spring um, we pull off a ton of plums. You can make good wine with it. But it's a lot of work to be done, and it is constant. It just It's not like you can do it one weekend and forget about it for a month. It's constantly uh, work that needs to be doing to be done. So if you're thinking about buying an Akia with a lot of land, just keep in mind that you're going to have to do a lot of work for its upkeep. And also look at the area where you're living, because property tax may be different in your area than in our area but we have all this land here and it's actually cheaper than my house half an hour or so away uh, for the property tax which uh, I'm not sure how big this is exactly I would say roughly around three acres if not more and ours is just 93 square meters back at home so um, that tells you how property prices can vary from one place to the next but if you don't mind a bit of hard work, cutting grass, chopping leaves, upkeeping every other day or every other week, uh, well, most weekends actually, that's what we're going to be doing. Go for it. Grow vegetables because the soil is great for growing vegetables. Okay, welcome back. So, property tax. Now, my house is approximately 98 square meters. And we pay on average around a hundred and I believe it's about a hundred and twenty thousand yen a year. So it's roughly around a thousand dollars. Not too bad, but it still befuddles me how we're still paying tax on something that we owe. We're paying mortgage, and that has its own taxes. And um, you know how how are we still paying property tax? And even when you own the property, you still have to pay property tax. It's just ludicrous. So you never really truly own your property. And the Hira house is about 80,000 yen a year for property tax. And that has approximately three or four acres of land. Now, the reason why it's cheaper, A, is because it's near the coast. So the, the soil there is, uh, is not as good technically as it is further inland, like here, further inland, the soil is a lot harder. And in Hirao, uh, although the, where the house is built, it's actually quite solid. It's very near the coast. So a lot of it is coastal land and it's very soft, sandy. So you have to be aware when you're buying one of these Akia houses, if you're thinking about moving to Japan, you're going to buy an Akia house, move to Japan. Fantastic. Recommend it. Uh, two things. One, leave your attitude at home. Um, this is not America. This is not Europe. This is Japan. It 
is a different mindset and culture completely and you are expected to fit in and assimilate now you don't have to be japanese you don't have to become fully japanese um they, they wouldn't expect you to do that just you know don't annoy your neighbors don't annoy people don't do stupid stuff like graffiti or you know uh, parkour that kind of stuff uh just respect your environment and respect your uh, neighbors and secondly be prepared to pay a lot of taxes everything is taxed here absolutely everything your, your salary is taxed your car is taxed your home is taxed your land is taxed your food is taxed your tax is taxed you're basically paying out a lot for a lot um so these are just things that people need to be aware of when you going to buy an Akia property, look at what else you have to pay on a recurring basis. Look at what you have to do to maintain the property. And also keep in mind, an Akia house is probably going to have a necessary need for maintenance or rebuilding or reform. So again, there's that to factor in as well. Uh, now, living in Japan, it can be a great lifestyle. Uh, if, if you come with money, I would highly recommend that if you don't come with money and you're going to make just the basic minimum at any job you do, um, it is affordable to live here on the Japanese salary. If you're looking to come and make your fortune, you're coming to the wrong country. Absolutely coming to the wrong country. Don't come here with grandeur ideas of, oh, I'm going to start a car import export business. That's not going to happen. Uh, there, and there are already a flood of people doing that. And most of them are previously English teachers, and they got an opportunity to do that. But now the market is saturated with these people working from home, importing, exporting cars uh, in and out of Japan. If you've got an idea for, you know, if you've got a restaurant or a bar or something, you, you need to look into the necessary rules and laws for that, obviously. Uh, but there's no reason why it can't be done. But you're not going to make your fortune here. Um, You'd, ha you'd have to have a big company and you'd have to be like the top manager or the top boss to be making good bank here. Uh, if you've got a skill set, like if you're, if, if you're a scientist, you may be able to get a job in one of the big companies, um, pharmaceutical companies here that might pay you a decent salary or you might be able to contract out for a certain amount per hour. Just keep in mind that not everything is rosy in Japan. So I just wanted to bring that out to you today. And uh, I'm going to leave it at that. Guys, take care. I just see a really nice car. Take care. I'll see you in the next video, all right? Remember, do what you love or love what you do. I'll catch you soon. Bye-bye.